Hey, what's up, guys? Okay, so in this video, I want to talk about a theorem, which is very simple, but uh, simple, but I have a mega video. Okay, so it's called ether list theorem. Basically, another uh, name, which is much, should be much more famous, is the Cobbick theorem. So it's like, if you know the quantum field theory. And uh, yeah, uh, basically, there is also related to so called Gaussian boson sampling. So if you're interested, you can check. But basically, the all the proofing ideas, or there's a function called Hafenian. Uh, hopefully, I didn't spell it wrong. Hafenian. Okay, so this is this theorem. Basically, it's just uh the simple, just the theorem to calculate the uh, calculate calculate the expectation value of the multivariate normal vector. So expectation value. Or the other, the multi uh, variable normal distribution. Okay, so the the, the theorem says the following, right? The theorem says that if you have x1, x2 up to xn, and then this guy is a multi variate uh, normal random vector, normal random vector. So let me just. Okay, so let me just explain a little bit what this means. Okay, so so we all know that there are one one the the real the the Gaussian normal distribution, right? So or the normal distribution. So somebody will write this. So I guess this is standard notation, right? So mu and sigma square means that uh, the your probability distribution is just one over two pi sigma. It's with some negative x one minus mu square divided by two sigma square. Okay, and obvious that you can use the Gaussian. The Gaussian integral to check that that is bdx dx is one. So it's really a normal distribution, and uh, this is mean is variance. And uh, so in the when somebody write x one up to x n, it says that this is like the the higher the multivariate one means that uh, somebody will write x equals to the capital n, or uh, maybe n and uh, let's say mu and the sigma. Okay, so in this case, that the mu is a vector, it's the higher that it's the n dimensional vector, and uh, this sigma will be so. This is called the covariant matrices. Okay, so the definition of uh, sigma ij. So sigma is n by n matrices. So sigma ij is defined to be the expectation value uh, over the Basically, x i minus mu i and uh, x j minus mu j. Basically, it's covariant of x i and x j. Okay, so you just take a lot of like normal, like one dimensional normal random variable and collect them. Uh, collect them as a vector, uh, sorry, as a matrices, and then uh, you can define this. Okay, so now once you have this uh, guy, that uh, we're able to talk about this theorem. So what theorem says is the following. If you take an expectation value of x1 up to xn, and uh, uh, will be so-called, uh, you can just take a uh, summation of p, belongs to so-called pn square, is a set where ij belongs to p. And you take the covariant of xi and xj. Okay, so uh, let's see. Okay, so sum, let's say sum is over the, this sum, right? This sum is over the pair, over uh, all, all the pairing of one to two up to n. Okay, so this is the same as the partition, just partition one to up to n into pairs. Okay. Or simply imagine that you can imagine this is so-called the perfect matching. Okay, maybe it's still hard to understand, but the, the simple example is that if you take x1, x2, x3, x4, then it will be the same as the expectation value. So remember this is just expectation value of x, i, x, j, right? Because the, all the mean are zero. So this means that expectation value of x1, x2 
exponential value of x3, x4, plus exponential value of x1, x3, exponential value of x2, x4, and the exponential value of x1, x4, and the exponential value of x2, x4. What's our x2, x3? Okay, so basically this is the perfect matching, right? So for example, if I have one, two, three, four, then you can find a way to contact this, or the one, two, three, four, this, or the one, four, two, three, this. Okay. Yeah, so if you write this, you know some physics, right? You can uh, like do the free quantum field theory, and uh, this guy will be the, the same thing. Okay, the proof idea is exactly the same. Uh, okay, so actually all these kind of stupid proof uh, comes from the fact that uh, uh, why uh, how this perfect matching comes from basically it comes from uh, some strange Lebanese rule. Okay, so let me just highlight the proofing idea. Okay, before we do this, let's do the R case. Okay, I think R case is trivial. R, R case says that if you take expectation value of x1, up to x something, the two n plus one basically take all these odds, right? They say you get out of the vector; they're all different, and they're all zero. Okay, so the proof idea basically is simple. Notice that the Gaussian things mean zero, right? So x and the minus x are identical, are identical distribution. Since the 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 variance is zero, right? So you can write it as its potential value of negative x1 up to negative 1 times x2 n plus 1. Right, but in principle, these are the same as x1 up to x2 n plus 1. Right, this is using uh, next x and negative x are identical. And then this guy will be minus 1 times exponential value of x1 up to x2 n plus 1. Okay, so combine this, then immediately imply the exponential value of x1 up to x2 n plus 1 are 0. Is zero. Okay, so yeah, so these are the simple proof. Okay, uh, I think all the non-trivial part comes from even case. Okay, so let me just uh, write why this is true. So the idea comes basically just the the stupid uh, the stupid the the, the Leibniz rule, however you can. Okay, so we will see this. Okay, so we know that this all these random variables are basically zero or zero sigma right, and zero sigma. So so we can write this guy out, right? So we can write this guy. We get zero sigma. If you write the probability distribution, then this probability distribution will give us exponential minus x transpose t as a vector, uh sigma inverse x divided by two plus uh plus this uh sorry maybe I'm, I'm i'm doing something stupid uh okay so yeah let me just write in this way all right so we, we need to write the normal distribution right, of this this guy so what it should look like is the following, right? So it should look like this. And there is a one divided by uh two pi, right? Things is let's say a dimension. So we'll get something in and the uh, the determinant of this thing. Okay. Okay, so now, uh, right, all we need to do, right, if I want, if I want to calculate the the this, the, the exponential value, right, let's say x one up to x n, then I should get the integral of one over uh two pi to the n sigma this, exponential minus x this sigma x divided by two, and then we need to that go the stupid thing. We need to that write on x one up to x n. And then I'll try to do the higher dimensional integral. And do the higher dimension it. Okay, and uh, but the the one there's a, a way to do this is that you uh introduce a you introduce like another uh, another ver variable which is uh simple for your proof. Okay, 
Uh, maybe it's a little bit tricky. So let's maybe work on a simple example. Okay, let's consider a simple one, right? So how uh, what is the good good way, right? I mean, probably the 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 the, the best way to get, for example, uh, how to compute this. Right, how to compute this integral. Okay, so the idea is that uh, you know this, and you know this. You know, uh, suppose you know this, right? Then, then uh, suppose you know this guy is like pi uh, square root of pi divided by a, right? And, and in order to do this, then you can just do partial a, right? You can just do the di differentiation on a. Then the, when you do differentiation on a, then you get the x squared here. Okay, so obviously that you can use this rule to get the uh, x two to the m is both negative a and a uh is both negative a squared dx, and obviously that you can check that when you do this, then you keep introduce this a right, and then you collect that, then you can easily prove this well related to the gamma function. If you don't doesn't know about it, it's, it's fine. Okay, and uh, so the the trick uh one way to do this is like you introduce uh, some variable here right, so just just uh, for the convenience. Okay, and uh, okay, right. So you you introduce some some term here, uh, to make the this uh, yeah, to make this computation like easy. Okay, uh, okay. What I want to say, okay, mm. and uh, okay, and another way, uh, okay. So this one is an important formula, okay. The other formula which is also important is like this, right? So uh, you suppose you can you can derive this, it will be this. If I remember correctly, you will get this. Okay, so proof of this is just very simple. You just complete square. So you complete this as a square and you collect this. Okay, and uh okay, so you can you can also using this, right? Uh, to derive, uh, uh, for example, you want to compute, let's say, x, this guy. If you want to compute this, then you can just do the differentiation respect to b. Okay, so it's like similar, the similar type. Okay. Okay, right? So it's very, like, very, uh, it's like very, uh, very similar technique. So you just do the differential uh, action on B and on this, then you you end the yeah. So you have differential on B, then you get X. Okay. So the in order to compute this, right? Uh, we did a similar trick. Right. So the goal is to write minus X transpose minus one X sigma uh, sigma inverse X divided by two plus uh, introduce a vector called V T X. So V is like uh, also n-dimensional, and the minus this, and you can comp uh comp this square and become this. Okay, you can just easily prove this by your, uh, you see, you can do doing this right. So basically, this is complete square as this one-dimensional case. Okay, then you can prove that one divided by uh two pi n, you determine sigma, and uh you release. Suppose you just add this. Okay, suppose so you add this. Uh then this will become this, right? So you can prove it's just this. Okay, why this is true? Uh basically you just yeah, you just do the same thing, right? You just complete square and then using the multi-dimensional Gaussian integral. And then the remaining term will be this. So this our, our exponential on our, our, our exponential. Okay, in order to compute all this uh, variable, right, all this, right, all this x1, right, if, if I won't get x1, x2 up to xn, then all I need to do is derivative on v, okay? So its potential value of x1 up to xn will be just partial v1 up to partial vn, and then set v1 up to vn are all zero, and do I count this exponential vt sigma v divided by 2, okay? Okay. In order to, for this guy uh, to be non-zero, right? You, 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 will get, you will get the derivative on end of them, right? So you can imagine that you, you can do tidal expansion on this right-hand side. 
Okay, so we can do a tire expansion, Vt sigma V divided by two, and one well, factorial m from zero to infinity. Okay. So obviously that uh, if they say if n is odd, if n is odd, right? Then you do the even derivative on all these terms and make uh, v to be zero, then you always get zero. Okay, if you set n equals to two uh, m, that means that only, uh, so n equals to two m means that I did a two m derivative on it, right? So and uh, each term has two v term, right? So that means that only m term, m's term survives. Okay, so combine all of this, then the, you prove the results. Basically, you just need using this and using this. Oh, sorry, I forget about the derivative. So V1 out of Vn, you just apply this guy, I count this guy, then uh, you you uh, you will get the results. Okay, so basically, this is the proof. Uh, maybe a little bit tricky, but maybe let me just do an example so that uh, we understand what the hell is going on. Okay, so let's say example. Uh, let's prove. Uh, let's say, let's say I want to get the uh, one, two, three, four. Okay, so I get, I get v one, v two, v three, v four, and I get on the 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 this. Right, so I get v t sigma v. Okay, and uh, in order to make these guys survive, then I can get partial v one, partial v two, partial v three, partial v four. And I do a tight expansion, right? So in order to make this guy survive, then I should only get a second term. Okay. Okay, now it's very, uh, very, uh, very stupid exercise to prove that this is true. Uh, this is like, you will get, get your results. Okay, so uh, you can just write this down. Okay, because yeah, okay, let me just, maybe let me just write, write, write it down, just for fun. Uh, okay, so let's pull out this. And uh, this guy will be like, like V, I, sigma I, J, V, J, and the summation I, J, and the uh, K, L, V, K, sigma, K, L, V, L. And assume all this I, J, K, L. I J K L uh, I J K L I run from like one to four, okay. And uh, yeah, hopefully you can see this right because you do the derivative on x four. Basically, you just pair uh try to pair four with this guy, okay. Then you will get the uh, you get exponential value of uh x one x two exponential value of x three x four. Okay, this is obviously right because when these two act on these two survive one, two, and uh, these guys survive three, four, you can see this is the rest. This is our results. Okay, and uh, yeah, in principle, there is a so-called double factorial term, but the idea is basically this. And uh, in a uh, like free quantum field theory, then you are doing exactly the same computation, right? Because in a free quantum field theory, then you can write your Lagrangian as uh, this kind of thing, or just add an auxiliary variable. But basically, there are all these come from this uh, E-series theory. Okay, so proof idea is very simple. Okay, and uh, you will see that perfect matching come up, right? So this will uh, this will give you a, a function called Halfini. Okay, see you guys in the next videos.